So there's various tools we can use for graphing. Uh, this is one that, that uh, I think works well for you guys. Um, and so I'd like you guys to use that for um, these first exercises. After we get through this, uh, and, and there the will be graphs and stuff you guys will be doing throughout, you know, from here on out. So uh, we use this for a variety of reasons. One, it's browser-based, so you can do it from your tablet, from your laptop, your PC, your, your Mac, your whatever. So it's nice in that you can do it from, from school or home or this or that. Um, your free account saves your information, so it's saved to the, to the, the cloud on, on the Plotly uh, area, and you can go ahead and, and uh, you know what I'm saying, you can, you can save it here and go home and, and reactivate it. So it's, it's pretty convenient. They've also committed to always having a free option. Uh, Plotly's um, business model is based on selling licenses to folks that do online graphing, so, so data analysts, things like that. But they've also committed that they're always going to have the free option for everyone. So that means that, again, limp, not as many bells and whistles, and you might well want to get um, uh, one of the paid versions. But uh, I would say it's also reasonably priced compared to many of our, of our alternatives options for you guys for sort of GUI-based uh, graphing options. But, um, but regardless, you'll always be able to, to do this, this basic functionality. So that's pretty cool. The other reason we're using this is because it's, it's naturally interactive. It's naturally web-based. So you can embed these figures into your uh, post that we're working on, for example, with our, with our uh, opinion poll write-ups. So it's a natural fit for that stuff. You don't have to go through a bunch of bells and whistles and, and things. Okay? So let's take a look at what this is. So everybody have a look up here. And I'm going to post some, some how-to, some helper videos and stuff that I've made in the past. Uh, I'll, I'll send those to you guys after class today, so you guys can review those, uh, short videos pretty much. Um, now, they're constantly updating Plotly, so those videos, I first made them about two years ago or something like that. So the in interface might change slightly from you know, what it looks like right now to what that, uh, that video-based demonstration or demonstrations that I've done for you, but the, the core stuff is all the same, so, so no stress. All right, so let's have a look up here. And again, everybody was able to get on okay? Establish an account? Okay, great, all right, cool. All right, now, oh, the, so I should say the other neat thing with Plotly is that um, you guys can collaborate. So if you want, so if you guys are working on your group post for climate change or what have you, you guys, one of you guys could start the graph and then you guys could edit it. Uh, you know, so you, you can allow people to, to, you know, adjust your axes and this and that. and. So it's also a, a useful collaborative tool. With our, with our Google Documents, we could you know, collaborate with a word processor. We can collaborate with our spreadsheet, as indeed we're doing with our data collection for our public opinion poll. But the graphing part, we, it's, it's, not, it's not super obvious how you do that. This, is, this is sort of fills that gap. This is sort of, you can use this as a collaborative graphing space. And uh, with, with the free version, you have some limitation, but when you get, if you opt to do the paid version, you can, you can set various levels of permission. These folks can see it, but they can't edit it. These other folks can edit it and, and, and vice versa. Cool? All right, let's have a look. So this look, should look pretty uh, obvious, pr pretty, pretty uh, um, familiar to you guys. So what we have here in the, plot, in the current Plotly browser is a, a spreadsheet, so this is where your data is gonna hide, and then down here is your, uh, your, your graph area. Cool? All right. So let's uh, just make up some data to start with. So you can either type in data or you can import data. If you're gonna import data, my suggestion is to keep, well, what you're gonna wanna do is make it very clean. So sometimes you guys might have a let's say an Excel spreadsheet, which is where most of you guys will be importing your data from. You might have several tabs or that kind of stuff. Get rid of those tabs. Just, just put on one, just one worksheet, one tab, get it all nice and clean. Also, probably you guys have your, your data sheets with extra stuff, um, units and all these extra things. Get rid of all that stuff so that you have the top line would be your 
which would be the, the title of your column or the, or the label for your variable, and then just the values underneath it. So make it nice and clean, and then usually the importation is not a problem. Usually when we have problems with importing data into any graphing program, it's because of the way the, way the, the incoming data has been formatted. So one of the classic ones is we accidentally have a letter character or, or an alpha uh, as opposed to a numeric character uh, in somewhere in the spreadsheet and we import it and the computer graphing program interprets all those things as non-numbers and then that, that sort of sends us into problems and there's various other things. So just if you're gonna do that, just make it nice and clean elsewhere, say in Excel, and then import that, that thing nice and clean. So you can do that, or you can actually just copy and paste if you have just a little teeny bit of data, or right, we can just type stuff in. Okay, so here's some stuff. So we're going to call this our um, rename the header to uh, days alive, and we're going to rename this to uh, offspring or something. Okay, so at a minimum, we need uh, two variables, right? An X and a Y. Most of the stuff that you guys will be doing for uh, our class will be some type of typical XY plot, perhaps a bar graph, perhaps a line graph, perhaps a scatter plot. Um, there are, of course, other way cool types of graphing you can do, but in general, we are interested in the X value and then some dependence of the other value on that. Right, so you guys might be used to hearing x axis and y axis. If you think back to your calculus and some of your other stuff, you might remember x and f of x. Yeah, right. And so most of the kind of stuff that we're interested in, whether it's people's opinions changing, whether it's it's uh, does this management action lead to this uh, amount of increase in fish or whatever, the idea is. Does this variable explain something about this other variable? Does time explain people's uh, uh, level of belief in climate change or, or what have you? With me? So why don't we start with a scatter plot? So in this case, I, I can have my data. And again, this is as much data as we want to have. Um, I'm going to come over here. And if I ever want to go to the home, the information page, whatever, where your data is going to live, you can just hit this. This is, this is the one thing that's become a little bit cryptic. They're, they're trying to brand themselves better. And so th this, is, this, is the plot, this is the new Plotly logo. So that's sort of the, the home level if you guys need to get to your home directory. But um, here we go. So, so I'm going to come up here, and here's my chart generation uh, box. So if I click scatter plot, now I have, I have the non-free version and I have like the professor version thing. So, so you guys might not be able to see all of these different charts, but, but the basic ones you guys can see. So we're, we're going to pick, we're going to pick scatter plot. And then here's my X. I'm just going to do a pull down. Let's maybe make X the days alive and Y the offspring. So you guys can just have a look at me now. You guys don't have to worry about doing it right now. You can just sort of see how the workflow works. Okay. So there we go. So I've got, and then check it out. Before I've done anything else, here's my data. So here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis, and here are various data points. And if you have a look, you can already tell this is different from maybe a traditional graphing program that you're used to, which is or which most of them are oriented to give a, a you know PDF printout or a JPEG printout of your graphic, right? Nothing wrong with that. That's totally good, but that is. In other words, most of those graphing programs are first pointed to an, an offline world, right? So they're oriented to make you make something or to help you make something that you're going to print out and put on a poster or, or insert in a textbook or, or something or print out and say, turn into me, something like that, right? The default life of a Plotly graph is online. So it's designed to be viewed online. You can, you can, we can, we can print a static version of this if you want to turn it into me or submit it to a, to a journal or something like that, but, but the first step is interactive. And so we can tell that again by going down here and seeing all this stuff. Uh, okay, so here, here's, my first, here's my first graph, cool. Let's, so now I'm gonna come over here to this thing that says style, bang that down, and I have a bunch of things are revealed to me, a bunch of different dialogue boxes. And these are all to make the graph more interpretable, more clear, all the adjustments. So if I hit traces, that's going to be the spot where 
I can maybe I wanted it to be a line graph instead of a, a, a you know just scatter plot points or what have you. Maybe I want to change the color to purple or whatever. Or maybe I've decided this is too small. I want to make these points bigger, right? Or maybe I don't like circles. I want to make it an edge. So all that kind of stuff, right? All that stuff is under your guys' control. Uh, you probably first want to start with the traces. That that's how the the it, the data will be displayed. Layout is and, and again this this should be pretty obvious, you guys. It's just toggle boxes. You can open this, close this. Um, uh, you can mess with how how much with the width of the margins and the the background color. You can do all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, hover interaction uh, will allow me to toggle these things on and off. Where is that? So right here, when I f hover over this. This is telling me, four, so this data point is four comma 56. But if I just, if I, if, I don't, if I don't care about the X, I'm just really focused on the Y, for example, I could turn that off and it would just give me the, the Y. Or if I wanted to know the, the name in the Y, I would say, oh, the offspring, there's 56 offspring there, that kind of stuff. Cool? All right. So I'm, uh, well, I'm going to turn you guys loose a little bit and you can start playing with this. But suffice it to say, all these things are, are mess withable, right? You can adjust, make your stuff look as, uh, as elegant as you need to. Um, then when I'm, after I've made my thing and I've, I'm fairly happy with it, I can come over to here to hit save. So I'm going to hit save. Now, again, I have a slightly different version. I don't think on the, you guys can tell me because they're, they're sort of constantly updating stuff. But, but I believe you guys don't have a private option. Um, in your free version, is that correct? No. Oh, you do have a problem. Okay, good. Okay, cool. So anyway, so so what this basically means is, uh, hey, only I can see this, or only people that I that I allow to see it can see it. This means anybody can see it. And so another great tool with this, uh, with 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 Plotly here is, so you guys generate this graph, right? You're gonna do you're gonna do some write up in a couple weeks about the public opinion poll, and it's all this and great stuff, and you're gonna you're gonna make some argument with our data, maybe compare it to somebody else's data, et cetera, and you're going to put that up. When you read the papers right now, right, you guys find a cool paper and there's some interesting pattern in the data, and you're like, damn, what's that value? I don't know. Looks like it's maybe 62, maybe? Maybe it's 63. It's a little hard to tell. Um, if you so choose with making stuff public, Anybody can grab not just your graph, they could also grab your data. So again, it's more about this idea, this philosophy of trying to have more collaboration, not just with, say, our class, but with anybody, right? So it, it, now, if this was some proprietary drug discovery thing, I probably wouldn't want to put that up online, but that's not most of us, right? Most of our stuff that we're interested in in coastal marine management is Oh my gosh, there's this amount of sediment coming down the river. Oh my gosh, we're taking this many fish out of the, off the reef or something, right? So for, in general, most of our management stuff, we're, we're probably pretty happy with sharing our data, right? If, it, if it's robust and, you know, the draft form, maybe not the draft until you're double checking stuff, but once, you, once you've, you've got it locked and loaded, great, man. More people can use, more people can learn from our information, not just from our words and our description, but they can actually grab the raw data and they can maybe reanalyze it in the context of their management situation or whatever. So that's a cool thing. So, so you can pick, uh, and again, we could, you, can, you, can name the, you could name the graph as uh, my test graph one or whatever. You could name the data as my test data file one or whatever the heck, and then hit save. And then once you do that, now we're good to go. Now I could log off and I could go do something, go have lunch and whatever, come back and, and I could get back to my stuff. Cool. One last thing to show you guys before we go on is, is so that that's archiving your stuff so that, you know, you don't lose it. Here's how you're going to get the data um, into other locations outside of Plotly. So you're going to hit not the say, well, you want to save first, but then you are want to do the share option with the share option. Um, again, there's, there's different things here, but um, for example, this is how you're going to embed it into your WordPress site. So you're going to generate a graph or, or, you know, 
you're gonna you're gonna work on your various graphs, and then when you, when they're ready and you're like, oh, okay, this is cool. I'm gonna put this in our results section or what have you. Um, you're gonna come up, and the easiest thing is to pick this. You could pick either one, but the easiest one is gonna be um, uh, iframe. And so this is just a bunch of code. What does that mean? Who cares? It's computer stuff. Don't worry about it. So I'm just gonna grab this. And then I'm going to navigate over. So let's say I want to do a new page. I mean, I mean, I've, we've already set up your guys' pages for you, but just in this example. Here is my test thing, right? So this should be familiar to you guys, right? This is just our basic WordPress dialog box. And for the most part, what I told you guys was to just use the visual tab. And for most of the stuff, typing in stuff, doing the hyperlinks, all that kind of jazz, you're good to go. That's all you need. In this case, this is the one time you, you need to do something a little teeny tiny bit differently. So uh, ignore Cornerstone, you guys don't have Cornerstone. But so what I'm gonna do here is after I've typed my text, Right and and all my text. Okay, there's my good, good stuff. There's my guys. I'm gonna go to wherever I want to insert my graph. Put the cursor there, or actually, sorry, first I'm gonna hit text. I'm gonna hit the text option. Right. So I'm gonna go to wherever that that I want that to be, and that that weird stuff, that weird googly gook computer code stuff, that iframe stuff. I'm just gonna paste it in here. Oh wait, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Just going to go back over here, copy this, come over here, insert it, and it's going to come in like this. That's all I need to do. Don't need to change anything else. And then I'm going to hit update or save, depending on what I've done. And now, if I go to view my page, and there it is. So there's my graph. So now the cool thing, note, so the, the neat thing about this is, um, it'll optimize itself based on whatever you're viewing it with. A uh, compute laptop, it'll look one way. If I start to you know, change it, if I'm looking at it on my phone, it's gonna automatically adjust the spacing and all this and that. If we had a PDF, which you guys could do in theory too, right? That's just gonna be a static picture. It's not gonna be optimized for our screen. So, so again, this is using all the power of our HTML, our, our, our connected world, and it's gonna optimize stuff to make it best for whatever. And also remember now also it's, it's live, right? So if I choose to make this interactive, it's a, and, and there are other types of graphs you can do too, it's an interactive graph, it's not a static thing. And so realize just what, so what this is doing is just as if we embedded, for example, when I showed you guys how to embed a, um, a YouTube video, the, vi the YouTube video isn't on your page, this is just a pointer. So in the computer world what it's doing is, it's, it's saying, hey, run to this website called Plotly, grab this information, suck this information, and display this information in my, um, in my web page. Cool? Is it like where if you were to update the data, will that automatically? Excellent question. Yes. So if I update the data and I hit resave and I don't change the title of the graph or anything, yes, it will update this. Totally. So again, it's also, it's, again, it's a great tool for the online stuff. Oh my gosh, I had that as... As a thousand, it should be two thousand. You just go back in, boom, 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 fix it, and then boom, good to go. Cool.